All right, so sheet pan pizza, pan pizza, Italian grandma, Sicilian grandma, whatever you want to call it, that is what it is, and that's what we're making today. Uh, the story is that, you know, Italian grandmothers, since they weren't professional pizzaolas, you know, slinging the dough up in the air and throwing them on paddles and, you know, into the oven and stuff like that, they would just basically take a sheet pan, you know, throw the, throw the dough down, let it proof, and top it with the sauce and cheese, bake it, and voila, you've got the pan pizza. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how easy it is to do, so stick around. And here we go. All right, so we're gonna start in a large mixing bowl with a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water. And then we'll go in with one tablespoon or uh, five grams of dry active yeast. If you're using dry active yeast, I'm using fresh yeast, so I used eight grams of fresh yeast. And then once you've got that dissolved, we'll go with three, uh, sorry, two tablespoons of sugar or 10 grams of sugar. And then three cups or 460 grams of bread flour. Make sure you're using bread flour for this. Uh, one teaspoon or seven grams of salt. And then one eighth cup or 30 milliliters of olive oil. And then go ahead and put your dough hook attachment on. If you don't have a dough hook attachment, you can do this by hand. Um, you're also gonna wanna go ahead and add in another cup of water, 250 milliliters of water. I just uh, turn it on to a low speed and let it go for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. You just wanna see the, you know, the dough kind of tighten up like that. Um, then we'll go ahead and dust the work state or workspace with uh, a little bit of more flour and let the, you know, pull the dough out. And then you're just gonna wanna knead it here a little bit. I just need it for about another five minutes just to kind of push any, any extra little air out, just make sure everything's really incorporated and smooth. And then basically you're just gonna shape it into a ball and then we'll throw it into a, back into the ball um, to let it proof. got in a ball shape just throw it back into the bowl cover it with a damp towel or plastic wrap and push it off to the side and let it rest for about two hours we're gonna make the sauce if you have fresh basil go ahead and uh, go ahead and grab some fresh basil if you don't that's fine you can buy it at the store uh, then we're gonna use these San Marzano canned tomatoes they're just peeled whole tomatoes and uh, yeah basically this is a really simple sauce it's just the canned tomatoes and three grams of salt and then, like I said, just some fresh basil, just tear those leaves in, or you know, you could cut them up and throw them in there. And then the way that I like to do this sauce is I like to crush it by hand. If you want to use a blender or an immersion blender or a food processor or you know whatever you wanna use, that's fine. I just like a really, really chunky sauce and I, I seem to always overdo it when I try and use machines. So uh, I just do it by hand. And as you can see here, it's really, really chunky and that's just how I like it. Also, just another quick note about the sauce. This is like a really traditional Neapolitan style sauce and that's the kind of pizzas that I usually like to make at my house. Um, so that's why I make this sauce so simple. You'll see that I'm gonna add more things when we actually make the pizza. All right, so two hours later, the dough has doubled in size. So we're gonna take a sheet pan, just coat the bottom uh, pretty heavily with olive oil and get that spread out and then we'll just basically plop the dough on there and start stretching the stretching process is a little tough and sometimes the dough gets hard to work with um, as you're pushing it it'll kind of start tightening back up so if you uh, you know kind of a little trick here if the if you realize the dough starts kind of shrinking back in on itself you can let it rest just let it sit for about two to three minutes and then start stretching again and you might have to do that a few times but uh, once you get it all stretched out I'll show you a little trick to kind of get it into the corners. All right, so now that you've got the dough pretty evenly stretched out, this is what I was talking about getting in the corners. So what I like to do is just literally pick it up from the corners, 
pull and stretch towards you. I'll show you again right here. So you just pick it up, pull it, stretch it out, and then kind of just press it back into the corners. And that, that usually works pretty well. Also, if you notice that the, it's not very, you know, you should be able to kind of slide the dough around on the sheet pan. So if it's not sliding very well, you might want to add a little more oil underneath it. Now that you've got the dough all stretched out, we're going to let it proof one more time. And this is going to really create all those really fluffy air, air pockets in the dough. And that's what you want. So uh, just cover it with some plastic wrap, let it sit out on the counter in like a warm space for another hour. Also, you're going to want to go ahead and preheat your oven and you want to get this set to 425. So after an hour of proofing again, you just go ahead and remove the plastic wrap and you can, you'll be able to see like how bubbly and fluffy this thing is. It's, it's awesome. All right, so now let's talk cheese. Uh, I've got whole milk, uh, fresh mozzarella, and also uh, fresh Pecorino Romano. Uh, for the whole milk mozzarella, as you can see, I bought the stuff that is already sliced and that just makes it a little bit easier. I like to cube it up into little pieces. You can shred it if you want. It's just this, this way right here to me is the best. You get like these little mozzarella cubes and they're not too, you know, they're not too small. Like when you shred it, sometimes it gets a little too small and that can melt too fast in the oven. So I get, they're almost like, I guess, marble size, uh, marble size pieces of mozzarella and you'll see here this is kind of what you're going for all right and for the pecorino romano uh i'm just going over a microplane just kind of get some shavings from that and you don't need too much of this but uh and if you can't find pecorino or if you don't want to use pecorino you can use parmesan all right so now it's time to assemble the pizza and you're just gonna take all that mozzarella that we just cut up and just kind of evenly place it over the dough. Once you've done that, you'll go in with the pecorino or Parmesan if you're using Parmesan and just do like a light sprinkling over the whole, the whole pizza with that. All right, so here we go. Like I said, the, the sauce that we made was really, really simple and basic. It's like a Neapolitan style sauce. So we're gonna add a few things to kick it up a little bit. This is just some dry oregano. I probably end up using about a tablespoon of that, just a light sprinkle over the whole pizza. And then about a teaspoon of black pepper. And same thing, just sprinkle it over the whole pizza. And then garlic powder was the last thing that I did. And just a little bit of that garlic powder over the top of the whole pizza as well. Now for your toppings, you can do whatever you want. If you want to put vegetables, um, any type of meat or whatever you want, go ahead and put it on now. Uh, I end up doing half pepperoni and then you'll top that with the sauce. And I know that seems really weird because you know, like most pizza that you find, the sauce is underneath the cheese. Uh, but with this one, since the dough is so fluffy and we let it proof, you don't want to ruin that by putting that super wet sauce just directly on top. So the cheese kind of creates a barrier there. That's it. You're just going to go ahead and throw it into the 425 degree uh, preheated oven for, I ended up baking this for about 30 minutes and I just, I rotated it halfway through because, you know, my, my oven doesn't, I guess the heat isn't uh, really even. Um, so I like to rotate it as you can see right here. So about 15 minutes in, I went ahead and turned it and then let it go for another 15 minutes. And time might vary, you know, I would check it around 25 minutes, but basically what you wanna see is like that golden golden brown on the top, the cheese is just starting to bubble a little bit, and then you can check it, if you pull it out, you can check it by uh, lifting up the corner and just looking underneath and seeing that golden brown crispy crust. And man, this thing came out awesome.
right, so now just make sure that everything's loose, everything's sliding, and you'll just go ahead and remove the whole pizza, throw it onto a cutting board, and cut it into the squares, and the squares that uh, I ended up doing 12 slices for it. So there you go, you're just gonna cut it into 12 square piece, pieces. This is the uh, you know the Sicilian thick crust uh, that you would see at like you know your, your normal pizza shop. And basically that's it. Uh, you can eat it now, it's ready to go. If you wanna put it on a, like a wire cooling rack so that it stays crispy, uh, you can do that. And just look at the inside there. I mean, you can see all of the, the air pockets and the bubbles and it came out really, really good. Uh, if you stick around and stay till the end of the video, I'll, I'll show you a little pro tip. So that's it, pan pizza. It's really easy to make. It just takes a little bit of time, um, you know, for the proofing process. Obviously, baking time a little bit longer than a normal pizza, just because it's thicker. Um, but it's totally worth it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a lot more videos coming soon. Thanks. All right. So pro tip to get that really true like New York style crispy thick crust. Uh, I just throw a slice back into the oven for another 10 minutes. Um, you can do this the next day or after it's been sitting out for a while once it's cooled down. I just put it on a pizza pan, throw it on my stone. If you don't have a stone, you can just throw it straight onto the rack, but you can see right there, you get that, that kind of like charring on the bottom. It's, I mean, you can't beat that.